not attempt any of the stunts you're about to see. Just when all hope seemed lost, message of a new message to an unknown old freak. Breaking Widowmaker here boys coming to you live all the way from my dad's farm and today we are changing the rear axle in this jalopy van. Now, I have had nothing but problems with this axle in this van since I bought it. Heavy duty friggin vibration. This is a 1999 van. It came 5 volt. I went and I found a 2003 to 2005 model. They came 6 bolt. Same bolt pattern that I changed this rear end to. So, now that I have one with the right gear ratio, I'm taking this sucker that vibrates like crazy out. And we're putting the 6 bolt one in. That hasn't been modified whatsoever. I'll show it to you in a second. Hopefully it solves my vibration problem. Okay, so as you can see, I have some 6 bolt wheels on this van. This van used to be 5 bolt pattern, but I changed it. It's time to do a brake job on this van. You can see she has drum brakes in the back, which I also wanted to upgrade. Alright, so here we are. You can see, not only does this axle come with a 6 bolt pattern, it also comes with disc brakes in the back, which is awesome. I need that. So anyhow, I went to a U-Pullet yard, I paid $163 for this rear axle that came out of a 2003 to 2005 model. I've also verified that the gear ratio is right, it comes with a G80 locker, uh, it came with drilled and slotted rotors, brand new brake lines, you know, so it should be a pretty good axle. Now when you're looking for a donor axle for your vehicle, this here is the production codes and you can see right there GU6 which means that this van originally came with an axle with a 342 gear ratio. G80 means it came with a locker which is awesome because that's exactly what this axle has. I have the wheel off and now you can see it used to be a 5 bolt pattern, I changed it to 6. I have drum brakes on the back, I hate those mostly because they don't match the front and I have a thing for everything being symmetrical. What you see here is two needle bearing caps off of my U-joint. These were the ends that were attached to the differential yoke. This U-joint was brand new last spring, it was bought from a reputable parts store. And you can see the needle bearings are perfect in this side, but there's not a single one left in the other side. They completely turned to dust. So, I had vibration problems with this rear end before and after that new U-joint was put in and disintegrated. So, I'm sure it was contributing to my vibration problem, but it was not the main source. If you don't know what a U-joint is, it is a universal joint that rotates your drive shaft, which is right there it attaches to and rotates the yoke on your rear differential yanking and pulling and pulling and yanking we've got climax she's in there boys if you're following along at home hoping that i can actually make the six bolt axle work in the old five bolt van the first problem you're going to have is the emergency brake cables are different between the drum brake system and the disc brake system. So when you grab your 6 bolt disc brake axle like this one, don't cut the friggin' emergency brake cables like I did. Grab them and bring them with you. You're going to need them. Alright, so I've ran into another problem. Well, it's not really a problem for me, but it may be a problem for you. You can see that the leaf spring perches on this axle have about 3 8 or a half inch rise. It's hard to show you in here, but the spring perches on this axle have at least an inch in uh, height. Which means, I can remove these 1 inch lift blocks that I made to level out the van when I lifted it. Thankfully, uh, this is going to work out perfectly for me. But you may have a problem with a tilted van if you don't do something about the front on yours or change the spring perch height. Okay, so I've removed my lift blocks that I made. I got the axle alley-ooped up into place. The width of the spring perches does line up with the older style vans. They absolutely will work. But one thing I want to tell you is not only are the spring perches different, but the clamps are too. So when you grab your donor axle, make sure you grab the emergency brake cables and the clamps and the U-bolts because they go with the new style axle. 
So the rain stopped. I'm back outside working. I have the axle mounted. I have the shocks attached and we've run into another difference. Wheel mounting surface to wheel mounting surface. This axle is approximately three inches wider than that one. Which I didn't know. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to stick out that much or be very noticeable. But it is something you might want to know when planning your build. Anyhow, day number three, things were going smooth as I shaved down my calipers. That's right, I said I had to shave down my calipers. Next I'm going to have to shave down my yoke. Alright, so these here wheels are 15 inch. They worked perfectly with the last axle I had on the van. Not so great with the new axle. That is a problem. You can see they turn freely now, but I did have to shave a tiny tiny bit off of my calipers to make it not rub. The next problem is, this here is called a drive shaft yoke. Your universal joint goes into that. Here's a bearing cap for your universal joint. It does fit into this yoke, no problem. However, it is not the same on the newer style axle. It's slightly uh, smaller. What I'm hoping to do is take this off, switch it on to the new axle, and hopefully all of uh, the spline count and everything matches, but I don't have much faith at this point in the job. You can see this is the original rear differential. It's not missing any teeth or anything, but this had a fresh fluid change approximately a year ago. And if you look on the inside of the cover, there's a magnet and she's just full of friggin' grindings. Anyhow, I'm going to clean up this cover, paint it, and I'm going to use it if it fits. Okay, so here we are underneath the van. I'm going to show you I have the axle in, done and tested. There's one more thing to do, and that is to uh, connect the emergency brake cables. Now, I'm going to show you, because I screwed up when I went to the wrecking yard, I didn't realize the cable ends would be different. The ones I need have a loop on the end, and this one has like a little peg that needs to attach right there. See, the, the loop would normally hook over that. So what I'm going to do is the cable on the older style van is long enough that you could make a loop out of the end, just like that. Then you just cut off this end, fold it over, and put a cable crimp on it, and she should be good to go. Anyhow, there you go. She's done. She's tested. She works freaking good. So comment, rate, subscribe, and stay tuned for more because there's a lot to come. Villains, I say to you now, knock off all the...